Welcome back everyone to Magius Plays Chocobo Racing. Last time, we finished the story mode, unlocked another character, and now we're going to take a look at what the rest of the game holds. We'll start off by looking at Time Attack, which is a standard mode for these racing games, and we'll talk a little bit about Bahamut. To be perfectly honest, Bahamut is a bit broken. Yeah, let's just go with the easy one. <clears throat> Unlike all of the rest of the racers in this game, Bahamut flies by default. Which means you can just go right over the edge of the track and not have to worry about slowing down at all. <clears throat> And just like any other uh, racing game, you have the time trial mode where you're just running through the tracks and there aren't any extra tracks of the, that we didn't see in story mode already. But you're just running across the track trying to get the best time you can. Now Bahamut has really good grip, really good handling, uh, really fast. And he has a really powerful ability that hits everyone. Now it's slow to charge, so you're not going to get it off a lot of times during a race. But it's still something that makes him a lot more powerful by default than all of the other racers. If you've unlocked him and you want to guarantee a win in the Grand Prix, use them. You get through the race, you can store your run on the memory card, and you can race against it in future plays through, uh, playthroughs on time trial mode. That's really all that's interesting about it. So with that out of the way, the next interest interesting one is a versus mode is your standard you race against a friend, standard race, you choose the number of laps, nothing really special about it. But the relay race, it's similar to the versus race, but instead of having just oh, instead of having a single racer go through all the laps you have three different racers and for each of them you can choose any of the special abilities that you've unlocked Let's see. Let's go with the floating gardens. That's a nice looking one. One lap each. This doesn't really take that long to explain. Now because you only have two racers on the track at any given time, you cut out most of the really weird stuff that, or the really t tough stuff that comes up with multiple racers. <clears throat> Don't have as many special abilities that hit three or more, or hit multiple racers. There's less chance that you're going to actually hit something that is going to be problematic. But you do need to make sure you hit the guy you're in the relay with to go fast.
Otherwise, you're at a bit of a disadvantage because, of course, the AI is going to hit that exactly every single time. And there I missed it again. Oh well. We're getting pretty close to the end here. And that wraps it up for the relay race mode. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Nothing too much to worry about. Now let's finish things off with the Grand Prix. And as is fitting, let's wrap it up with Chocobo with Dash. Now you can either choose which four courses you race through, or you just do a random select. Again, no new races for this mode, you're just going through four courses right in a row. A lot of it comes down to how well you've learned the mechanics of the game. Now this first one being the uh, introductory uh, test track, really easy. But you do get to see all of the nastiness that can ensue in the multiplayer game. You can be doing just fine, and then you just get gobsmacked by all sorts of nasty stuff. But we're done with the first race now. First place. And just like with any other Grand Prix mode, you get points depending on how you finish. First place gets nine, six, three, yada yada, blah blah blah. Now if you get stuck back with the rest of the pack, oh boy does it get nasty. But as it is, I've gotten enough practice with this game that I can lead out from the pack quite a ways on most of these maps now. Look how much Bahamut was able to catch up with that one use of his ability. If I was playing as him, the other racers would not stand a chance. Uh, last, last lap. Uh, 
the Fahamut can charge up his ability again. That'll be enough to give him the lead. But I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, it might. It'll be a tight finish. And I missed it. Yeah. Imagine if we had that ability on our hands. That just breaks the game. Or two, they, two races in. And we're back here again. And that's another thing that happens a lot. The AI bumps into you from behind and gets the and uses your ability immediately. Hidden you without any chance to defend yourself. And that really knocks you back on the race. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's this sort of stuff that makes the game not so fun. When it happens. But, you can see how easily you can catch up when you actually know what you're doing. Yeah. That one I just got pounded after with ability after ability after ability and there was no way I was going to win that. So, unfortunately a lot of these races do feel like they come down to luck. Unless you're playing Bahamut, in which case, you just demolish everything and win anyways. Bahamut takes the lead.
Yeah. I'm definitely not winning this Grand Prix. Yeah. Even though I had a pretty good run on that map, I just got hit with so much stuff that there was no way I was winning. But if you place two bow, once it finishes, you see the podium. And if you finish in first, you get a little cutscene. I'm going to do this again with Bahamut. So you can see how that works out. Don't worry, we're not going to sit through the entire Grand Prix. I'll just see you at the end. Right, we'll fast, put it on fast forward so you can see how powerful Bahamut really is. <laughs> to see what happens when you win. I've only gotten this with Bahamut so far, but you get some pretty spectacular shots of him flying off the course. Kind of fun, but nothing too huge. And then we go back to here. Well, that will wrap things up for Chocobo Racing. Tune in next time for, well, whatever I feel like playing at the time. Until then, Magius out.